Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. I'm your host, Roger Connect, President of Universal Accounting Center, and I'm excited to bring to you another great episode of this podcast to help you work on your business to ensure that you're growing your company and building the company that you've always wanted to get paid what you're worth off offering quality accounting services. Now, each and every episode, I have a guest, someone, an expert to bring to the, the discussion to help you actually work on your business, and today's going to be no exception. I actually happen to have a good friend and someone that I highly regard. It's Chad Hymas. He's the owner and founder of Chad Hymas Communications, and he does a variety of speaking around the world, actually addressing a number of things that all of us can relate to, which is mindset related, staying positive, and a number of other things that we're going to be discussing today. So Chad, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Looking forward to it. This is going to be quite fun. So yeah. I, I've known you for a number of years. Uh, I've heard you speak on a number of occasions. You're amazing. What's the Mis the biggest misunderstanding people have of you and what it is you do? Um, I think uh, just, uh, just by mere looks that, uh, that, uh, that I'm, I'm trapped and oh, I mean, maybe it was an accident and, and, and you know, just from seeing me from afar, I, I think that uh, uh, they, and, and as far as what I do, uh, I, I don't think that's a secret. Uh, that's pretty known worldwide, but people look at me and they think that I'm, you know, that, that maybe that's a sad deal or it's sad that he's in a chair and I find it to be rather free. Um, uh, I find it to be rather uh, uh, just a breath of fresh air. It's, it's allowed me to travel the world and share messages like you just told the audience that I never dreamed of. And, uh, and uh, I have met people that have full capacity. There are probably some of them that are watching today that have full potential to scale, grow, strategically plan their business that are more trapped than I am. And I'm 95% numb. So I'm sure we'll talk about some of those things today. But yeah, that's probably a, a, you know, a myth. Excellent. No, I appreciate that because you're right. First impressions are a lot. Absolutely. And when people see you, they perhaps come up with certain things that they presume. Okay. And I would say most of the time they're probably wrong. I would very like to say that these tires have probably touched the soil of more dirt in this world than most people's shoes. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant or to brag. I just think that you know, now that they knew that, then now it becomes a little more interesting. Well, how's that work? Yeah. How did it happen? You know, because it wasn't part of the plan. Well, just because you mentioned that, I'll, I'll point out, you have a Guinness Book of World Record. Uh, yeah. That's probably not the smartest thing to, but yeah, the, the Guinness Book of World Record is, is, is uh, pushing my chair from Salt Lake to Vegas. So that's a world record. Yeah. It hasn't been broken in 20, 22 years. Yeah, amazing. Actually amazing. Okay. So regarding business, you do a number of speaking engagements, mm -hmm. talk to a variety of successful people. What is one of the things that as someone is starting their business, do you feel they need to consider as you would work with them? Um, great question, and it's, uh, this is a common trait amongst people that seem to succeed, rise to the top, and get through those initial stages of growing, scaling, um, uh, and doing it in an organizational way versus those that will never get there. And that is, people think they have to do everything at once and have everything done at once, and I completely disagree with that philosophy, and so do those that are successful. One of the people that I like to talk to and watch and discuss with the most is a shark on Shark Tank. His name is Mark Cuban. Uh -huh. And he teaches the same philosophy. And that is you need to focus on the little things and be focused and strategize on those simple things first rather than say, you know, I'm going to go retail, I'm going to go wholesale, I'm going to go web, uh, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. Focus on a couple of those things and then the other ones will, will follow suit in their own due course and time. So it's the little things that make the biggest difference. In other words, that, that's the simple answer to the question. Yeah. The little things. The, for me, in the speaking world, you don't need a demo video. You don't need a website. You don't need to have a best-selling book. You don't need to have uh, all these credentials behind your name before you get to be on a stage somewhere. That's not, that's not necessarily true. I didn't write my best-selling book until 12 years after I started speaking. And so, wow. and, and never wanted to speak anyway. It just kind of fell into my lap. So that wasn't even part of my business plan in the beginning. And so I think that when we start focusing on little things, doors open. Yeah, yeah. Now, because of business, I do want to kind of point out and ask, sure. you own and run multiple businesses. You're involved sure. with the ranch. You're involved mm -hmm. with the elk ranch. We have eight pillars. Your, yep. yeah. eight, 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 I, I, call, I call them pillars. Yep. Some call them build, build, there's eight different pillars that bring us an income and all separate incomes. So, and every one of them need to, you know, I, I, I try and uh, my goal is to have them be seven figure uh businesses. And so if, if I don't see a seven figure outcome, I'm not going to pursue that. And that's just the way that I think. That's the way my brain thinks. Exactly. Wrong, right, or indifferent. That's how I look at it. Yeah. So tell so. us a little bit about those 
pillars that you have because I think each of them is very unique. Sure. And you do an amazing job delegating in those respects because sure. you've, you've got to rely on other people for you to be able to grow that business. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think you just nailed it. I, I, maybe we can start right there. Um, I am 95% numb. Uh, I am very, very weak physically. Um, you helped me get in here today. You helped me transfer. I rely on other people's strengths. Today it was your muscle, your biceps, your triceps to compensate for my, weakness, well, my weaknesses. The same thing happens in the office. I allow other people's strengths, web design. Uh, today we have a, a professional cameraman that's helping us do this. Uh, people that, that have expertise in different fields to compensate for what I, I, I don't wanna worry about social media. I don't wanna worry about a couple things. I wanna worry about my health because I can't help others just like you unless you help who first? Me. Right, that's not a selfish thing. That's, a, that's, that's something that people forget. They wanna go help all these people and so they run faster than they have strength for and then they get burned out quick and then they give up and then they end up waddling away and they disappear. When they fo if they focus on their own health and, and their own gratitude and purpose and passion in the morning, they can help many more people. So there's one aspect of these pillars. And then you asked about the pillars. We have my biggest pillar is the mastermind pillar. So just like you have a mastermind for accounting, I have a mastermind for leadership, I have a mastermind for the safety world, I have a mastermind for entrepreneurship, and those groups bring, the, that's our biggest pillar. Number two would be our products. Number three would be the speaking. Number four is the tours. Number five is the, is the ranch. And then there's three or four more. Three or four, I mean, there's, there's eight total, so we're, we're missing three more. Well, first of all, I love the vision that you have. And each of those pillars are independent. They stand they are. on their own. They do their own thing. Right. But I'm going to go back to what you were sharing about relying on others because yeah. I think this is huge. Yeah. Pride oftentimes and ego gets in the way. And... I and, struggle with that too. No, there, no? Yeah. but the, the, well, I'm going to call you on it in, in just a second. So here we go. So the point is, is I think all of us presume that we are a burden to other individuals. However, if we're so prideful that we don't let, allow other people to help us, we're denying them the opportunity to be blessed on helping other people. Very fair. That's how I, I mean, I don't know who's going to help me tonight in the airplane. I haven't met him yet. Yeah, I don't walk on the airplane. Um, so there is, there is some very uh, strong truths and principles to what you're saying right now. Um, there is a sidekick to this, however, that I, I hope you'll agree with me on this. We'll see. Okay. I'm not going to try and convert you. I, uh, those that I'm closest to, I don't like to have help me. Huh. I know I said for better or for worse to her when we got married, yeah. I don't like her help. It's been 22 years. I, I didn't say I'm not grateful, Roger. That's yes. different. Yes. Um, I still struggle with that pride issue today. I, I, I am grateful for Shondell. It takes, I, I get myself dressed. It takes me two and a half hours. I, I don't mind that. When I'm at home, she doesn't want me to take two and a half hours to get dressed. <laughs> she has me dressed in five minutes. She'd rather have me spend my time with the kids and go have breakfast with them and talk to them. Uh -huh. I know what the right answer is. I just don't. And then there's another sidekick to that. She's nice about it. She'll ask me what I want to wear. Yeah. And I tell her. I want to wear my cowboy boots, my Wranglers, what you have on today, and one of my Harley Davidson shirts. And then she puts on me whatever she wants. I've discovered I wear outfits. And if you're a guy and you wear outfits, you've got worse right. problems. I'm just saying, she puts on me whatever she wants me to wear. And so there's a little running joke about that with, between her and I. But, but, but the truth is, if we're going to hit the truth, I, I have a hard time letting those that are closest to me help me. And uh, after 22 years, I'm still... So this, this is a journey for me. Yeah. And the joy is in the journey, not the destination. The joy is in the journey, right? And, and so that's one aspect of it. So I think you speak some very strong truths and you've nailed it. But I wanted to just clarify that sometimes it's hard for us to let those that we love the most help and we need to do that. And I am guilty that I need to do that more often. Just, just some thoughts. Well said. Um, of all the jobs that you have as you run your company and you travel as much as you do to speak, what is something that your job has taught you about running a business? There are several right ways to solve a single problem. Mm. I don't have to walk a certain way just because everybody else does. I don't have to type a certain way just because everybody else uses 10 fingers to type. I don't have to get dressed a certain way. I don't have to eat all three meals like everybody else eats all three meals. I can do things differently. And there's no, and, and, and to go along with that, comparison, comparing my accounting firm to somebody else's accounting firm is a thief of all my joy and all my reward. Comparison is the thief of all that. So stop comparing yourselves to other people. Um, whenever I compare myself to other husbands that are holding their wives' hands walking down the street, 
I am unsuccessful as a business person. I'm unsuccessful as a father. I am very unsuccessful as a husband and I'm unproductive in my mindset and my thinking. So I think that comparison, while it can be a good advocate and a good tool to use, as long as it boosts us to be better, that's different, right? Yeah, when you're yeah. comparing and saying, man, if I, if I only had that, maybe I could do something with myself. If I, only, if I only had what Roger has, maybe I could really be productive. And the truth is that might be true. But when I focus on that and, and, and spend a lot of my time on that, then um, I'm really worthless. That, I, there's no better word. I'm, I'm worthless in my mindset, my productivity, my mindset in scaling my business and growing my, biz, my businesses and helping others grow. It just becomes lip service and a facade rather than authenticity and real. So I, no, hope that, I, I like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that comparison analogy is, I think is very helpful. Yeah. When used correctly, you can see where you can strive to yes. be better, right? And I can, yeah, yeah. I compare myself to other successful people, which is great. You know, yeah. I, I see what others in their mindset are. And comparing in that light is not a bad thing. That's a healthy thing. Yeah. But comparing on what you've lost and, and don't but, have and don't have and then dwelling on that yes there's nothing wrong and i do that frequently i'll, I'll compare myself to others that have something that i wish that i had and there's nothing wrong with that you can shed a few tears you can even mourn there's a time for that yeah but when you stay stuck there you become more trapped than than me and i'm numb yeah right you become you, you self you self you self discriminate you, you, you self entrap you self prison yourself i mean it's it's I, I'm not saying it right, but it's just, I call it gun shy. G-E-N-S-H-A-I. Look it up. Gun shy. You're not allowed to belittle anybody else, most of all yourself. That's what it is. That's what gun shy means. You're not allowed to belittle, demean, or take away from anybody else, but most of all yourself. So. And that's what happens when you compare and then focus on what others have and you wish that you would have it. Because if I only had what Roger has, then I could really, man, I could really, if I only had the money that he has or the backing or the contacts, and in reality, that might be true, but why not go out there and try and grow and scale it myself in my own, yeah. in my own way? Yeah, the, the dreams that I had to be a hair model have long gone. That, are they gone? I gave but up But you can still those. do that in your own life. I mean, I mean this, this could be a new look. Right? <laughs> this, this could, could be, be the new look. This could be the new bob, you know, the head bob doll. You, could, you, you, could, you can have one of those made, right? You start that's, selling them. That's <laughs> right. I don't know that anyone wants me bobbing on their uh, dashboard. You're probably right. But all yeah. right. That's good. All right. Um, what is a common myth? about your job and your field of expertise? My name is on a lot of books. My name is in the Guinness Book. My name is on all my best-selling books. My name is on YouTube videos. My name, if you Google it, is everywhere. That's a problem. Uh, it's a major problem. Why is that? Because I am only successful as all the names that you will never know that help me onto the plane, mm. that help me shower. The anonymous people, the noble, the selfless, the giving, the caring, whose names you will never know, that allow me to go from point A to point B and do what I do. You will never know those people, uh, but somebody's recording them somewhere because they allow me and they have their part to play in the symphony that allow me to do what I do. Even the gals in my office, and my wife would be another one. My children. My name's everywhere, and it shouldn't be. Um, but that's the way the world works. So again, the point in successful business, as we're talking about business, is Correct. to surround yourself with good people that are selfless. And while they might not get all the credit, and we shouldn't take the credit, we should always remember to give more than we take, Give without remembering and receive without ever forgetting who gave to you. So I try and give as much as I can and then forget it. And that way I don't expect something in return. Right? You don't expect... And as we're on this topic, Roger, if I can just state this. Please. It's the law of sacrifice. It's the law of self. It's, the law of... it's like the sun coming up and the sun going down. The law of gravity. We need to give more than, more than what our job or our firm provides to people. Do more than your contract requires. And if you have to think before you give to somebody, that's called a negotiation or a trade or a change order. And that's not giving at all. So my dad taught me that in the hospital. He asked me to do more than a husband requires. That was the, that was, remember we talked about the steps earlier? Yeah. We talked about, that was just one small, son, 
it's not about your hand anymore. It's about hers. So you don't have to feel her hand. She needs to feel yours. It's not, you don't need to use your legs to do a layup. It's not about your layup anymore. It's about their layup. So go show them how to do a layup and you don't need your legs to do that. Be present. In the professional world, we call it visible felt leadership, BF, BFL. Visible felt leader, it's an acronym. Visible felt, be visible to the people that, that are serving you that are. So if I have owners of firms out there, accounting firms, I would ask them what their greatest asset is. What do you think their answer would be? Most likely they're gonna say their people. So then I would go to their people and say, are you better because your boss is here? I mean, are, are you, do we send you home happier, healthier, safer, less stressed? Because our firms owe that to those people. Why? Because they spend most of their waking hours away from them. So they, they love the most. And no amount of money can pay for that. Yeah. So we owe it to them as a firm to provide the resources, whether that's an exercise room, I don't know, lunch once in a while, uh, maybe an educational class, some way to grow and scale themselves, a lunch and learn session, bring somebody in that's an expert in some field that, that can help those people go home happier, healthier, less stressful. So I would beg the question then, if our owners that are watching this say that their greatest asset is their people, how many of their people did they send home stressed, less happy, uh, overworked? And most of them wouldn't know that number. However, if I were to ask them, do you know that your, your employees, if they're missing a thousand or two thousand dollars on their paycheck, would they know it? What would the answer be there? Of course. That's a contradiction of what they say with their lips, but then, so you're right, we're, we're speaking the same language, yeah. you and I, Roger, but that's a contradiction. So if their people are their greatest asset, they should know right where their people are. Mentally, physically, and maybe what, I, another acronym, NFV, needs, fears, and victories. What are the needs of my people? What are their fears? And when's their birthday so I can help them celebrate that? A victory. When is their anniversary? When, how long have they worked for me? When can I celebrate that and maybe bring in some lunch for the team just to celebrate Sharon because Sharon's been with us for 13 years, whatever that is. I mean, again, there's several, several right ways. And you don't have to go spend a lot of money. I'm just, I'm just throwing some things out there that people appreciate that. They, they want that. And so if people truly are the greatest asset, show it to us. Yeah, when I focus on that, one of the things I try to address is there's four common things that are motivations for people that okay. get them to strive or do more. Time. If you can reward them with time, they would like the freedom to actually go spend time with their family You're or right. do hobbies. Yeah. And so if you can say, great job, well done, go home early or have this Friday yeah. off, the time could mean a lot to some Absolutely. people. Other people, time, they wouldn't know what to do with it. They would go home and just be like, I don't have family, I don't have hobbies, I'd be bored. But what they may want is money. Right, they're motivated by money. They've got debt. They've got something they're saving for. Something they're looking forward to buying. Well, money means a lot. So if they worked a little harder and got a, a little bonus, that would mean the world to them. Sure. Okay. For other people, it's not time. It's not money. It's recognition. They just want to feel appreciated. They want to feel noticed. They want to feel as if they're making a difference. Absolutely. And they want that acknowledgement. They want the praise. It doesn't necessarily have to be in front of everyone, but in front of should, someone. Should be public. Yeah. Yeah, a and, movement like that should be public for sure. Yeah. Recognition public. And so when you get down to knowing what motivates the individual, you can use the right carrot to reward them for yeah. the work that they're doing. And so I think it's like a love language. Is, Find out what their carrot is. I, uh, think, you're, I think you're speaking, yep. we're speaking the same thing. Yeah, love language. By the way, love that. That was a game changer when I learned those principles with my children, with my spouse. Yeah. Huge game changer, and it actually is applicable, I think, even in a work environment. Yeah. There's a book variation of that that's work-oriented, yeah. and I think those languages really do define who we are because we might be thinking we're expressing ourselves in a favorable way, but we're not filling the bucket of the person that we value the most. Very fair. So don't go tell your people that you love them. It probably won't come off very well, maybe not professional. Show them. Mm -hmm. Like using the terms and, and the ideas that Roger shared. I mean, show them. Yeah. Love is demonstrated by behavior, and we should love all of our employees. Yeah. We should love them. Very good. All right, so obviously a number of the people that we're speaking to, the ones that are listening, are owners of accounting businesses. Okay. They're established. They've got their business in place, working with clients. But sometimes they get to a stagnant place, which is it's redundant. They're not motivated any longer. What advice would you have for them as they're working in their business? They're living the life of kelp. Kelp is seaweed. It's kind of looks like this. It's kind of, and then they watch all the other fish. What a stagnant life that is! 
then they die, go to the surface of the ocean, end up on a beach somewhere, get raked up and put in the garbage. Uh, I'll never forget my first time uh, going scuba diving and I felt free. I was, so this is gonna answer your question. I felt free because I was kind of upright in a paralyzed body and my family, they were filming me and my trainer, my scuba diving trainer had a new vision for my circumstance. They wanted me to feel what it was like with the fishes. So they took me off of my rock. They put me over on a new rock. And I, I was uncomfortable because I liked the old rock. <laughs> I was comfortable there watching from a distance. I was a little more uncomfortable being amidst them all and having the fishes and some, some more that were big. And they, they, I was a little nervous. And, and I was also a little more alone. And I was worried that, you know, what if something goes wrong with the air? I can't touch buttons. I can't. Uh -huh. And so the answer to your question is that that we need to get awkward. We need to get. We need to stretch ourselves. We need to, instead of just being content. And I'm never content. I'm not. But I was content there in the ocean. And so I think that we need to have a self vision, or sometimes we need to have an accountability partner to say, Hey, where are you doing? What are your goals? What are your health goals? What are your business goals? And 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 do that on a regular. I have several coaches. They're always asking me these questions so that I don't find myself in a stagnant. Yeah. So they're stretching me. My trainer was stretching me. She wanted me to experience what it was like, not on the rock that I was but over here, and a different rock where maybe I could be and experience something different. And maybe have a new perspective on, you know, on what, what, what I could do, what the possibilities were. I learned that in the hospital really quick. I mean, I was comfortable sitting in the bed, not doing anything, and having the TV on watching Judge Judy. She's very addictive. <laughs> and they wanted me to go and push a chair. How does that work when your hands are numb? I mean, I'm, but once, once I started to do that, I realized that it was going to open up doors. I don't know if I realized it was going to open up doors. I realized that I was creating more freedom for myself. Yeah. There's the business principle right there. When you stretch yourself, you're creating more financial freedom, which enables you to help a lot of people, right? So it's not about creating, there's a difference between being rich and wealthy. Rich people go out and they build pillars of businesses and they get a lot of money and they become rich. Wealthy people, they help other people become rich. And they create that. And they, they help others do that. Rich in their mentality, rich in their physical growth. I mean, we're not always talking about money, although money is a good motivator. But health is a good benefit you know, as well. Uh, spirituality is a great gift. The gift of friendship the gift of service, the gift of getting the whole accounting firm together and say, you know what, we're gonna go spend today down at the food bank. We're gonna go serve people that are struggling to get food on their table. Watch how they come to work the next day. Yeah. You watch, They're, they'll be talking about it all day long. Yeah. You know, instead of just working on numbers and all the different people that they represent and trying to get the taxes ready, go find someone in need and, and, and take the whole firm. You, you will get much higher productive rate than just come back and have in the regular staff meeting, if they even have one, you know, and, and the, I'm just finding a place to serve and getting them all. In school, they call it a field day. Remember that when we yep, were in school, yep. we had field days. I remember my field days. I remember, I don't remember a lot about school. But you remember the field days. Absolutely. I know right where we went. I remember going to Hogle Zoo. We got a behind the scenes look at the different alley. We saw the trainer, fed the gorillas. No one gets to see that stuff. We just see the animals behind the glass. And I remember thinking, gosh, I want to be a zookeeper. You know, I was just like in third grade, you know, this is a cool thing. This is, it was eye opening. The same thing applies in the professional world. Take them on a field day. Go find someone that's doing something kind of unique. Go to the adaptive disability center and watch those people work their tails off just to get from point A to point B. Watch a paralyzed 14 year old girl crawl on the floor and everybody's motivating her. When she finally hits that goal, everybody cheers and boosts her up. And in the meantime, you're boosting your own self yeah. vision as well. It's, it's incredible, Roger. You know, when you talk about field days, one of the things that's really advantageous for accounting firms is we have many clients, each of which is a business in and of themselves, and to take the staff and literally go to the client oh, and yeah. see what, what the they business do. does. What do they do? We're yeah. doing their books. That's We're great. actually taking care of the company from a financial point of view. We see the numbers. But have we really been on site and seen the facility, That's met awesome. the employees? And you can go from tour to tour to tour to tour and meet all these people, learn fascinating business principles. So I think that's excellent advice. That's on that same note, you're a business. How important to you 
as a business owner is the accounting. How useful is it? Oh. What would you say to these well, people I've who got, are accountants? I've got to know my numbers. I mean, I get a report once a week. Um, I, 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 I do. I get a report. Well, I shouldn't say that. I get a report daily because we have daily goals. Uh -huh. So I want to know daily, do we hit the goal? Do we not hit the goal? Okay, so this tomorrow, then if we didn't hit the goal, this we got to make up for it tomorrow. Yes. We act with urgency. So accounting is done daily, but the, the weekly report is what I really want to see. And then monthly, how do we do? And if we're ahead of schedule, that doesn't mean that we lax. That means we're going to have a better year and everybody reaps the rewards of that. You know, And so, I, so accounting, I'm not in business to lose money. Yeah. I'm in business to make money and to make make the lives of my family better and to make the lives, that means that doesn't mean entitlement, that just means that, well, I like to provide, there's some pride that, that exists in me to provide for my family. There's pride in me that exists in allowing my wife to have her, her passion is foundation. She has a foundation for orphan kids. I take pride in helping her be able to do that. And that takes resources, that takes money to do that. It's not because of me that she gets to do that, she allows me to be gone to do that. Let's take that same principle and tie it to kids. I should send a text off today, and so should you. Sounds something like this to a kid in school. Hey, this is Dad. Sorry, I know this is unexpected. I don't text very often. And I know you're probably in school. I just realized that today I spend most of my time away from you. You just need to know the value you have in this family. I really appreciate all you do for your mother and for me. And I hope that you never forget that. Thanks. Bye. That's it. Don't tell me you love them. I'm going to make you a promise. That kid will never forget the fact that when, they come, when that kid is faced with depression, COVID masks, lack of homecoming because of COVID restraint. I'm just saying what kids have gone through the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. When that kid has faced depression, suicidal thoughts, they will know one thing. And one thing, dad, dad needs me. Dad looks up to me. My mom loves me. I got this text. This, this is the proof. And that's how they fight it off. That's how they fight it off. They don't fight it off with meds or getting a psychiatrist. I'm not against, I'm not against it. I'm just saying all too often people don't maximize on their potential. And it's because we, as business owners, don't let them know what their self-worth is or show the, you talked about appreciation and different ways to do that. You are so right, we don't do it. And then we wonder why, we just perform as kelp. We just stay stagnant. We shouldn't wonder why. We're not doing what you talked about. We're not, we're not giving them those things, that, what their needs are. So I think this is all kind of tying together beautifully today. And I think, I think you're spot on, Roger. I think you're spot on. It's, Thank you. I believe in those things. Well, Related to the unsolicited compliment, let's say it is, or expression of love, one of the things that's helpful, whether it be an employee, a family member, a friend, is when it's unsolicited like that, it's it's clearly genuine. It's authentic. Yeah, and that absolutely, and that yeah. stands out. And as yeah. you were pointing out, it becomes one more manifestation of I'm important, I'm valued, I'm making a difference for someone else. That appreciation can for some people be life-changing merely because of the fact that they are probably dealing with a state of depression or anxiety and all of a sudden here comes this unsolicited message, authentic, genuine, I appreciate you. You're much needed and, and I, I agree with everything you just said. That was wonderful. My, uh, my father, uh, he knows that I broke my neck on a farm and I've always had this dream of being a, a farmer, always. I've always wanted to be a rancher. Cowboy boots, Wranglers, working with the animals. It's always been my dream. Yeah. I receive a phone call, not a text. My dad does not text. 72 years old. I receive a phone call every day. It's very brief. And it goes like this. Son, where are you farming today? Well, Dad, today I'm with Roger, a good friend of mine. Uh, helps other people in the accounting world, Dad. And we did this podcast today for hour and a half, two hours, whatever whatever it is that, and it was a nice building, great people, and that's what I did today. So I just want you to let you know I'm proud of how you farm. Better go by. That, that is it. That, I mean, that is it. That's it. That's exactly how it goes. Yeah. And I get the phone call every day. I wonder how many people get a phone call from their dad every day. See, my dad never tells me he loves me. He doesn't need to. I never need to hear it. Never. Why? calls me every day. 
it's demonstrated. I, I don't need to hear it. Yeah, his actions are speaking. I know it. I know it. And you know what? I need to hear that sometimes because it can get lonely up there at 30,000 feet flying to Korea or flying to Atlanta. And so I can play back those messages. Son, where are you farming today? Oh, Detroit? Son, I never thought that you would be able to pull through. You never know how much this has helped me to watch my son. I mean, can you imagine how hard it would be to have one of your kids laying flat on their back in a hospital? Yeah. You'd want to switch in places. Yeah. My dad couldn't do that. So today he lets me know that he's grateful that I'm at where I'm at. Not money. It's not money. It's just it's been a way for him to heal, to overcome some of his mental challenges and his desire to you know, give his life for mine and give me his legs instead of that, that we wouldn't change anything. It's, been, it's worked out really for the better. And, and, and he knows this. And so he's helped me to become a different farmer and farm differently. Yeah. So anyway. I, I hope yeah, that you're a fisher of men. Yeah, farming differently. Yeah, farming differently. And uh, yeah, fishing differently for sure. Which is to, to the point that we talked about early, earlier. There's several ways to farm. Yeah. And I used to think that 800 acres that, and you've been to that place before, the, yeah. the, the ranch. Um, I used to think that was a pretty good sized pad. Most people would say that 800 acres is a decent sized piece of ground. Yeah. Don't rob yourselves. Don't, don't do that. Um, these tires have taken me to all seven continents. Roger, that's, that's a big farm. That's, that's a big farm, sir. I think sometimes as accountants, owners, we think too small inside of our buildings and our offices and our cubicles. When there's so much more out there that we could be doing to help, bolster up, uplift. I mean, the doors are out there, and there's never been a greater need yeah. for people to have that kind of vision than today because people are yearning for it. There, there, there's, there's never been a greater need. So. Yeah. I don't mean to rant on, but... No, no, you did good. So I'm going to change topics. Sure, again. sure. We're sure. going to change gears. Okay, all right. Um, right. You kind of alluded to this, but so I'm we're not... So are we changing gears or are we not changing well, gears? We are. Well, we are. Right, you, right. well, you brought up the scuba right, gear or the, uh, the uh, scuba dive. So I'm going to ask yeah. you, uh, what's your most favorite vacation and why? And I think you've already alluded to it, but we're going to well, see. I, I didn't want to go scuba. That, that's the, that was just it. On the scuba diving trip, I got this card... For Father's Day that said we're gonna go do something we've never done before yeah and for me that was kind of uh, it was an unrealistic car because I've been traveling for 22 years and I've taken my family to a lot of places so there isn't too many things that we haven't done before so when I got the news that we're going scuba diving that is something we haven't done before and there's a reason why I mean I don't <laughs> swim right so that that was a whole that was a whole new realm in and of itself but back to the question of, of what uh, give me the question. What I, where What's I, your my most favorite, favorite vacation? So and why? So I, I like to take my family on a cruise. The room there is completely accessible. I can have French fries at two a.m. No one can stop me. Yeah. And they're free, and they bring them to you, and you tip them, and and I I just like to go on a on a cruise ship. I uh, but you know what? I, I don't know if that's. I I do love to do that. I do love to. And so we'll go once every two years. We'll take the family. We're going to go this year. Um, when the kids are off for Christmas break from college, we're going to go. But probably my, I like going, to, I like going to the ranch for a couple of days. No more than that. This is the Elk Ranch? Yeah. yeah. That's because that's my dream. Yeah. Um, any more than that, I get antsy. I start to see things and, you know, I, I go to that place that I don't, I shouldn't go. And that is, man, I wish I could, uh, I just, I, this fence is broke, but I, I you know, so I, I got to call the guys to get them to go fix the fence. And when I just get out of the truck and, boy, if only I had my legs, then I could really get something done. I, if I just had the, you know, just had the use of my hands, I could, I could actually do it with no legs. You know, and I start, you know, remember, we, we don't want to stay there. And yep, so, yep. so I like to go to the ranch for a couple of days, or if we're doing a retreat like you've done, three or four days, I, I'm busy. My mind is, you know, not on there. And, and I enjoy the ranch, and I love to share it with other people. But... You know, much more than that, I find myself being kelp. I, I get stuck when I'm just kind of sitting at the ranch. I need to be with somebody. I need to be helping. or I need to be finding a place to contribute to the world, whatever that is. And I don't know how people live that don't do that. They just live a stagnant... You talked about this. Yeah. They live 
a stale, stagnant, kelpish life. And I'm guilty of that. I did that for some great time after the accident. And uh, it took a, an awakening for me to realize. It didn't happen overnight. And it's still happening today. It's still a journey. Mm -hmm. uh, people often ask me, Chad, when did you finally get there? When did you finally... Because they think with all this, this eight pillars and the ranch and, and Chandel and I have been married for 28 years now and I've been in a chair for 22. I always get the question, so when did you finally... Are you joking me? We work on it every day. The gals are working in the office as we speak to hit our goals for today. I am working on my mindset every morning when I wake up to, to find something to be grateful for and then to find something that I can do differently in order to be a better husband, a better father, a better business person, a better uh, disciple, wh whatever that is for you. you know, it can be different for all of us. It, that's okay. What can I do uh, to add to my portfolio that when I die will have credibility? We call it legacy. Because when we talk about money and accounting, let's face it, you're all leaving here the same pockets I'm leaving with. Nothing. Nothing. Other than the people that you helped and the legacy you left behind, yeah. which very seldom it ever has anything to do with money. Kind of ironic that we're talking to accountants and yeah. the money means absolutely... No, I'm not saying it's not important. It's a means to an end. It's a means to an end. Yeah. 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 Well said. Very well said. Yeah. All right. So you brought up earlier that your wife, Shondell, is actually involved with an orphanage foundation. Oh, yeah. Um, you've also adopted some children. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Why, why was that something important for your family? Well, it wasn't uh, to me. I was fine with it. The boys were three and one when I got hurt. And uh, a few years later, about seven, my wife came to me and said our family wasn't complete. I thought we were doing great. <laughs> the two boys, I was comfortable, content. We talked about this. I, yeah, yeah. You know, empty nest early, get the boys out. We can travel together and, and we're done. And she said, well, we're, we're going to have more kids. And I didn't know what she was talking about. I, I, I don't remember. I didn't phone a friend. I, I, I didn't know what was going on. I, you know, Shondell said, that, well, there's more than one way to have kids. And I didn't know that either. Uh, Shondell said, we, we need to go find someone to serve. So we talked about the law of sacrifice and law of service. So remember what I said about the credit? Me, my name's on. Yeah. Shondell taught me all this. She's the mind. She's the brains behind every chapter, every word I've ever written. She is. She's a living epitome of every book I've written. Um, that's how I got a daughter, whom, as you know, because we talked privately before this started, that um, we're taking her to college tomorrow yeah. as a freshman. I'm emotional about that because this girl has come to us from a third world country and has not once ever said, Dad, sure wish you could come out and play soccer. Not once. Not one time. She's got beautiful dark skin. Dad, I need you at my game. Yes, 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 Gracie, I'll be there for sure. Thanks, Dad. I always play better when you're there, Dad. I won't miss a single game, Gracie. Not one. And uh, you know, now we're letting her, her, her wings spread a little bit. That's right. Let her go. And she's going to go out and she's going to do amazing things for the world. We've adopted a little boy from Ethiopia. As dark as God made his kids, this kid is. Yep. And he came to us with absolutely nothing. And I, if you look at my phone, you will see that this kid has texted me over a dozen times today. Sounds like, Dad, the lawn's mowed, the weeds are pulled. Dad, I got the bulls moved from pasture 11 to pasture 9 on the four-wheeler, Dad. And Dad, I also made sure that the cow elk had the two bulls in with him for the rut, Dad. I got the two bulls in that you asked me to move. This kid's 13. Give or take a few months because we don't know his age. There's no birth certificate on this kid. I mean, we had to make one up and, and get that all done legally. But, but I, I'm just saying, this kid came from an orphanage and lived there for roughly eight or nine or ten years. No one knows for sure. Yeah. He was left on the doorstep with the umbilical cord still attached. And my wife found him on a mission trip over there. And she wasn't coming home without him, Roger. She was not coming home without him. So she fought for 11 months. 11. And she got him here and got the surgeries that he needed to fix some deformities in his face. And this kid's, now that he sees what the possibilities are, he wants to go back to his home country where people don't have that kind of belief or that kind of vision. Yeah. They're stuck. Yet he sees and knows by testimony, by fact, that they can have a better life and that they can have their, their lips fixed. And they can have 
straight teeth. And it can have a palate where their tongue doesn't go up through their... They, they, they can have this stuff. Yeah. And he's going to go give it to them for free. That's his passion. Yeah. And he's just using the farm where we live as a platform to make a savings account and build up the money, an accounting firm. Yeah, yeah. And go and help other people. And I'm going to back him up. I love it. So you've shared some setbacks. Um, everybody experiences setbacks. Some of the people listening to the podcast today will have had or maybe even experiencing today setbacks. Um, when your ranch caught fire and burnt down, how, how do you cope with, how do you deal with those setbacks? I think I've lost at least everything in my life, my life, sorry. I think I've lost everything at least three or four times in my lifetime. The best place to start is when you lose something. Whether it's a loved one due to a passing, unexpected death, suicide, the loss of freedom, which you've all experienced the worldwide, COVID, mm -hmm. going to a movie, going to a football game to cheer a team on, gathering together for a school dance, just going to a restaurant. We all lost that. The whole world lost that. You honor your losses by the way you live your life moving forward. You honor your losses, the death, the suicide, the surgery, the cleft palate, the burnt lodge. Yes, it did start on fire. But I'll this put it this put it right into respect. This girl that we're taking mm -hmm. to school tomorrow. When that lodge was catching fire, and I had 90 people in there for a leadership retreat, 90. And that fire caught 936, and I wasn't leaving that building. I did not believe that it was that bad. And the smoke coming up everywhere, and I was not getting out. I mean, they had to come and pull me out. I just could not believe that that building could burn down. Yeah. There's, there's no way. If this is not happening. I, I, there's no, why are you guys all panicking? And they could see the building from the outside, and the roof was going to collapse. And they got me out 30 or 40 minutes before it collapsed. And, and my wife and kids arrived about the time the roof, probably 10 minutes before the roof collapsed. They got there. I mean, they were having everything barricaded off. Shondell fought her way through the lines. And my daughter, this beautiful little girl in a church dress, it was a Sunday, she was running straight for the fire. I was in my van with tears 150 yards away in the parking lot watching it burn with some people around me. She ran right through and a fireman ran and grabbed her and she started elbowing and kicking and screaming and she was, she was hysterical. She thought I was stuck in my office. She thought, my dad can't move, he's stuck. And the fireman pointed over to me in the car and she straight lined it right to me and she just grabbed onto my neck. And, and at that point, I realized, let the sucker burn. <laughs> let the thing burn. That thing's, that thing's replaceable. We'll, we'll rebuild. This, right here? Yeah. I got my daughter. I got my, I'm just saying, I was mourning the loss of a bunch of wood, a pro shop, a bunch of clothing. I don't know, 25 mounts that I've collected over my lifetime. Elk, moose, deer, mountain lion, you name bear, it. The bear, bear, the bear, the grizzly bear. Yep. All that burning up. Uh, the gorgeous kitchen, all the, uh, Shondell and I had a portrait done of us, which is being repainted now. And it's all can be, it's all just material stuff. Yeah. That girl, when she knew that I wasn't stuck in there, and she was just, you know, just wrapped around my neck, I remember thinking, it's okay. This is, we're going to get through this. We're going to be fine. Gracie, you were going to go in there with the roof collapsing and you were fighting that fireman to go save me. I don't think I've ever realized how much you love me. I always thought mom was your favorite. She made, she, dad, mom is my favorite, but, 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 but I love you too, dad. And, you know, I'm just... It's, you know, this is kind of a little ongoing joke that Gracie and I have. But that said, I knew I meant something to her that day. And, and I've always known that. Yeah. But I guess sometimes we lose things in order to make us 
realize what we really have. And that was one of the days that I lost everything and found out what I had. And breaking my neck is another one. Having a business not succeed the way that I wanted it to is another one. Mm-hmm. And so we just move on to the next phase. Yep. But you stay focused. You, you have to keep going. You have to focus on the little things. Yeah. It's the little, you, you talked about that world record marathon. It, it was, the, 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 I quit, Roger. This is, I quit when we were almost there. I quit in Mesquite, Nevada. Oh, wow. Well. We had to change things up. It was so hot. I don't sweat. I mean, I can't sweat. But the heat wears me down. I mean, you know this because I'm wearing long yeah. In My body, the temperature doesn't regulate itself. And so if I get too hot, that's heat stroke. And I, I've never gone through the stroke itself, but I know what, it, I know what the symptoms are because it makes me tired when I get too hot. I want to go to sleep and I can feel myself nauseating whether I'm driving or whether I'm at a, an amusement park and it's outside and it's hot or at the zoo with my whatever. I know when I'm getting too hot. Not by sweat, just by I can feel myself getting, I need to cool down. I need some water. I need some water on my, my, my neck. I need some. We had to change the marathon to go at night instead of the day because the sun was beating down on me. So I'll just hit this. We're in Mesquite and I'm pushing at 2 o'clock in the morning. Have you ever seen the movie Forrest Gump? Yeah. Do you remember where he's running from Pacific to Atlantic uh-huh. and then from the Canadian border to the Mexican? Uh-huh. He's running back and forth. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all of a sudden he just stops. stops. And he says, I think I'll go home now. That's what I did. Right in the middle. I can see Las Vegas in the sky. It's 80, 80 plus miles away. And I, I'm done. And my dad is in the motor home. There's a police entourage kind of guiding us through the darkness. Everybody stops. My dad comes out. Everything okay? Dad, I, I think I'll go home now. He says, okay. I, uh, I understand. Why don't I carry you back to the motor home? We'll sit there for a minute and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you some Gatorade. And if you want to go home, we'll take you home. But you and I'll talk for a minute. I said, oh, you sure? Yeah, that's great. He picked me up and my hands were blistered and bloodied from pushing 500, 400 plus miles. And he sat me there and said, so why do you want to go home? And I said, well, I've hit my, you know, I've actually surpassed what I thought I would do, Dad. Yeah. I've done, I mean, I hit the goal and... And uh, I know that Las Vegas was the ultimate, but, but I actually beat the record, Dad, and we're good. And I'm tired and just kind of, you know, I, I just feeling burned out. I, I just, I just not, I'm not feeling driven, Dad, to get to Vegas. I just, just want to go home, Dad. He said, that sounds, no problem, son. We, we can get you home. He said, before I take you home and turn this bus around, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. He said, how are you measuring your success? I said, what do, you, what do you mean? I don't, I don't understand. He said, how are you measuring how close you are to Vegas? I said, I don't know. I just look in the, the green, for the green, the green markers, the green mile markers. That's, yeah, yeah. He said, I know, I've been watching you. You keep counting them. And he said, they're getting further and further apart, aren't they? You're slowing down. I said, yeah, yeah, you can read me. I, I just... So just slow, Dad. Just slow. This is uphill. This is just killing me. He said, well, I get it. But if you're willing to go back out and change your mindset a little bit and don't even look for the yellow stripes, I'm sorry, don't even look for the green markers, I'd like you to look at the middle of the road and count the yellow stripes one by one, the, the passing lane stripes. Yeah. It's one by one. I think maybe we could do something that's never been done. Are you willing to try that for me, son? He said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'm a little nervous, Daddy. Just I'm tired. Son, I don't care if you stop in 10 stripes. Well, we'll go home. No problem. And I went out that night and I pushed just over 2,000. The next night, we started, I pushed 8,400 stripes. And that night we hit Apex Junction. And for those of you that don't know where Apex Junction is, it's 17 miles away from Las Vegas. It's all downhill from there. We waited till the next morning at 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. Helicopters were in the air. Police, motorcade. On tra- they shut down the strip, Roger. And I coasted my way. I coasted into the Mirage. People were running out in the morning. 
I was on TV. I mean, yes, they were all drunk. I don't care. They're drunk or not. Drunk people are the best people. They were, they were happy for me. Yeah. I didn't even know who they were. They were just seeing them. They were running out of the casinos and cheering me on. And they were all half drunk. And when I crossed that finish line, there went up a cheer from a bunch of strangers that I'd ever, never met before that made me weep. And I remember what my dad said was true. While the difficult takes time, the impossible just takes a little bit longer. The difficult takes some time. The impossible, that just takes a little more effort. A little bit longer. But, but just count the stripes. Just do the little things, which is kind of how you and I started today's conversation. Yeah. Baby steps. Baby steps. I love it. I love it. I'm going to make this a little bit more light now. All right. You're good. I think I'm going to try. Whether or not I <laughs> succeed, I don't know. You're good. You're good. All right. What's your favorite holiday? Oh, Mother's Day is right there. Mother's Day for sure. Um, is right there. I love, I love Halloween because that's when Christmas starts for me. Mm -hmm. For me, I mean, Sean Douglas doesn't really like it, but I like the lights up for two or three months. I want, I want it up. I mean, I just so Halloween is when it starts. I love, I love the Christmas, and I think it's the break. You know, I take the twenty second through the third off every year. Yeah, the twenty second through the third, I am, I'm not going to travel unless I'm going. The year we're traveling, we're going to go on a cruise with the family during that time, but. But, but, but yeah, it's, I, 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 I kind of like that time at home and I look forward to that, but, but I'm ready to go on the third. I, I'm usually ready. Like I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm edgy. I'm ready. I'm ready to get, get back to work. So. I agree with you. Yeah. I yeah. can't sit too long. Yeah. All right. I'm going to keep going with this. Yeah, I'm going to move right. it on. Yeah, right. So you've talked about some influential people. You've mentioned your children, your wife, your mm -hmm. father. I mean, some really important people. What do you feel they're learning from you? Sometimes I feel like I'm the guinea pig. Like it's easier to give than to receive. Well, I'm on the receiving end every day of my life. Mm -hmm. And if that's the role that I need to play in order for them to learn some life lessons, I don't like it. But maybe that's my part. So if that's what they're learning by helping. I mean, Shandell said last night, you know that Shandell spoke with me last night at an event. Yeah. In her talk, she said that my husband will never know how much he's changed my life. I lost it because I don't like it. But if that's helping her behind that, I don't like it. So maybe that's what they're learning. For. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I can answer that. I, they say it. My boys say that they're better off when I'm there. I don't understand it because I don't, I'm not there to teach them how to do a layup. They say that Dad, you're the one that taught us now because you, you were there. You took, all you did was you told us to jump off the left foot and shoot with the right hand. You didn't need to show us that. And when we did it wrong, you just made us stand on one foot and just shoot with the other hand until we got it right. You didn't have to show us. So maybe that's, I don't know exactly how to answer that, Roger, but that's what I thought of when you asked the question. That's all right. All right, I'm going to go on then. I, I'm going to put this into your... Um, in your lap, you get to now pick the topic. So I'm going to list off. Good, thank you. Uh, four topics, and you're going to. What if I have a fifth though? I mean, what if I want to change this up a little bit so we can? I'll go ahead. I'm just playing. All you right, all right. So I'm going to have you pick first one, and you just pick one of the four. Okay, all right. The first one's going to be faith. All right. Music. Okay. Work-life balance. So those are all three good. All right, and then the last one. Can be any of your, of your choice. So sometimes people will choose, you know, uh, politics or whatever. But oh. so so faith, how that's important. Music, music work life work balance. life balance. What what do you want to talk about? Let's talk about faith. Okay. Talk about faith. You just yesterday spoke to some ecclesiastical people yeah. and their spouses. Yes. Um, you what? regularly speak to ecclesiastical people yeah. and, and talk all denominations. To them. Uh huh. And yeah. and. Let's talk about that. Sure. Um, is it easy to serve? Yeah. It's most rewarding for me because I'm a person of faith, and I believe that there's no one better than the other. Um, I, uh, I'm a Latter-day Saint by faith. doesn't mean any better. doesn't mean just a, my faith. I served my mission in a Buddhist country, Thailand. What a fascinating faith that is. Those people are so giving. Whenever I go to uh, Cambodia or Thailand, and I wheel my chair up into those villages and go into their home. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I just lied to you. It's not really a home, it's a tin shed. Yep. That's how it is. And they offer me everything in their fridge. 
oh, wait a second. It's a cooler, actually. It's the same size cooler that you and I take Camp out with. camping. Yeah. That's the same. That's their fridge. They open up that cooler and they offer me everything they have in that cooler. You know as well as I do that I have three fridges, massive fridges in the lodge. I don't know that I've ever opened up all three, especially the ice cream freezer. To, I'm just saying, they give everything they have. Faith is, God's not going to say, what church did you go to? He's not going to ask me how many countries I went to. He is going to want to know how long I sat. And I'm going to say, I lost hope in myself, which is all faith is. I lost hope for a while. But then I started to realize maybe I could farm. You call that being a fisherman. Maybe I could be a fisherman differently. Maybe I could be a farmer differently. And once I realized that, I, boy, I got after it. But I'm sorry for the couple of years. I am, I am sorry for that. And I'm sorry for being mean to Shondell and not wanting her help. I, I said some mean things to her. I, I'm sorry. That's just my faith. That's what I believe in. Yeah. So, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna say, so were you a Christian or a Jew? He's not gonna ask me that. Do you know how many Jewish people I know there that don't believe in the same Messiah that I believe in that are some of the most selfless, giving, loving people that ever existed on this planet who went through hell as they were being killed left and right. And that's their, that's their lineage, that's their heritage. There's no justification in that. I mean, so I'm a believer and a creator and I have a strong faith and I believe in that faith very deeply, but it does not mean that I'm better, nor does it make me uh, more qualified than anybody else that lives on this planet or that has ever lived on this planet. How does faith apply to business? I think that it, I think they, they go hand in hand. I, I, I believe that. I, cause I, without my faith that someone's going to be there to help me, I wouldn't be flying. Remember, you depend on other people's weaknesses to compensate for your strengths. Sometimes I have to wait for the right person to walk out of that, that airport to help me get into the Uber. And I have to wait a little longer than, than, other, than other times. So I have faith that when you and I are done with this, that you're going to, or somebody, if you need to jet, that you know, Wes, who's here filming us today, I'll, somebody's going, I, 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 don't know, I don't know yet, I, but I'll, I'll get into my van and I'll make, you know I speak tonight, again, you know that. That's right. When I get to that destination, I don't know who's, I, I don't know who's gonna be yet, but someone's gonna walk in and they're gonna help me. And then when I fly out tomorrow, I don't know who's going to help me with my business. Remember, remember what I said about my name being there? All these people, all these little people, along the, the very littlest steps that have helped me to be in Guinness or have successful businesses. It's not Chad Hymas, not even close. It's all those people that have never even received a paycheck. And I'll, let me just hit that. Most of the time when a bellman helps me into the room and I go to give him a $20 bill, what do you think they say to that? No thanks. No thanks. No, no, no. I'm happy to. And then I say this. Do you have any family? Yes or no. Let's just say that they do. Yeah. What do you have? Well, I've got two kids and my spouse at home. That's great. This $20 bill is not for you. This is for the kids. Take them home some ice cream. Now what do they do? Oh, they'll, they'll take it. They'll take it because it's not for them. And we'll do things for others that we won't do for ourselves. Right. The catch is you can't, maybe we talk, you can't take care of others unless you take care of yourself first. So I constantly have to be reading good books. I constantly need to be involved with good people like you. Podcast, listening, learning, growing, using a platform to scale, to strategically plan and be organized in my daily routines. And stay consistent, because consistency compounds. Whether that's negativity, negativity, thoughts that way, mm -hmm. yeah. or it always compounds upon itself. So I want to feed myself with positive vibes, positive thoughts, positive nutrients that allow me to keep driven and not let somebody else dictate what my prognosis is. Very good. You know, I think, I think that encapsulates faith very okay. well. Very well said. Uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Right where I'm at. Oh, I don't blame you. I know where you live. Well, I'm just saying... Listen, as bad as it is in the States, and we have it rough here, we're going through a drought where you and I live right now, That's right. 13 years, uh, Lake Mead is down, Lake Powell is down. Whenever I cross the Atlantic or the Pacific coming home, I always thank God that I get to come back home. I love home. Same.
This is a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place. Yep. And so are other parts of the world, and they'd probably say the same thing. Exactly. You know, you go to Samoa and talk gorgeous places. There are some amazing places. I love coming home. Yeah, I agree. If you could meet with any one person, dead or alive, who would it be? Mother alive? Teresa. Oh, very good. Any particular thing you'd want to ask or learn? Just want to thank her for what she did. Yeah. She's just an average sister in an average parish. Yes. Who saw a place to go give and she went out to help because she read this story in a book where a guy was commanded to go dig a well up on a hill. The guy's name is Jacob. And whenever you dig for a well, you don't dig on top of the hill. No. It's stupid. You dig at the, the, the river base, the bottom. Yep. But because he was commanded to do that, he did it. And she liked that story. She found a city where her parish was at. They were striving. They, were, they, they needed water, potable water. Because of the story she read and was inspired by it, the well of Jacob, which still exists today, by the way, and provides potable water 2,400 years later. I mean, it's, the well of Jacob exists today. Yeah. Mother Teresa went out and found some guys with shovels, and they dug a hole. What they, what, what, what they run into? Water. The next village catches word of that. The next village catches word of that. And that crosses over eventually into seven countries. Nobel Peace Prize winner. And now here's what I want to get to. How many likes did Mother Teresa have on her Facebook page? None. Great, thank you. How many Instagram followers did she have? Zero. Thank you. How many LinkedIn profiles did she have contact with? And how many contacts did she have on her phone? None. So if Mother Teresa can do what she did by just stepping out of her element and finding one small place to give and become one of the most recognized names in the world, Mother, never had a child of her own, her followers gave her the title mother. Yeah. She was just an average nun. How much more then can we, as accountants and owners of companies, go out and find people when we have everybody at our fingertips on our phone? We, have, we can contact anybody we want. DM them, private message them, contact their secretary. Anybody, if I want to contact some celebrity, I just got to follow them on social media and just make a comment. On their, I mean, I'm just saying, I can contact or connect with anybody that I want in the world. And yet we're looking at how many likes we have. We're backwards. Well Mother said. Teresa. Well said. All right, let's keep going. Um, what I want to do now is uh, ask what question did you expect me to ask that I haven't asked? Well, I didn't know what I was getting into coming in here. I, mean, I didn't know where we were going to go. I've, I've done a lot of podcasts. Uh, uh, so I haven't surprised you? I, I didn't have any expectations. I, Good. I, I didn't, I didn't, you, 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 uh, you, you didn't really even prep me. You just said, you know what, Chad, I'm going to, I'm going to be straightforward. I'm going to, I want to help my people, which I, I loved that. You know what? I will say this, which I, I, I do have one and we don't need it at all. A lot of podcasts want to know my story. What happened? And you haven't asked me, which I love, because today's not about me. Today's not about you. Today's not even about the people that are listening right now watching. It's about everybody else they can impact. Yeah. And if they see it as that, they're going to leave this podcast, and they will go find a place to help. And this, so the true beneficiaries will never see this podcast. The true benefactors of this podcast are the ones that are going to be impacted and affected by the lives of those who are watching. That's who this podcast is for. So I like the fact that you did not ask me the expected question of, so what happened? And tell us your story. It's not my story today. It's not even their story. That they're, it's about the stories of those that are sitting in the cubicles, building their dreams. But when I say they're building the owner's dream for him. Yeah. Building his dream. All right. I've got some rapid fire questions I'm going to ask you now. These are going to be very, very simple. It's an either or question. As I go down the list of either ors, you just kind of let me know, you know, which which your preference is with the either or. Okay. All right. So as like as red or green, I just pick. That's right. right. That's it. Yeah. So, so this is quick, quick answers. Quick answers. Rapid fire. Go. All right. Star Trek or Star Wars. Star Wars. Easy. Money or fame. Fame. Uh, oh, you thought I was going to say family. Yeah. I'm Money or fame. fame. Uh, I don't like fame. Money you can do good with. All right. There you go. Read a book or watch a movie. Watch a movie. Introvert, extrovert. Extrovert. Disneyland or Disney World? Uh, I don't even know the difference. I've been to both. 
I'm, uh, I would say Disney World, though. I, I like how it impacts everything with the C. Okay, there you go. Yeah, right. I like the C. All right, drive or fly? God, fly. Easy one. Fly. So much freedom. Now, to be clear, you drive. Oh, yeah, I, drive. I, mean, I drove here. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I love, I love, flying is so free. It's so cool. I, I, don't even compl- I don't even complain if the flight's canceled or delayed and people squawk all the time. I'm just grateful I get to fly the next time. There you go. I, right. I love to fly. All right, breakfast or dinner? Dinner. I never eat breakfast. I don't eat breakfast or lunch. Okay. Right. I got to watch my weight so that people like you can help me. So I need to keep my weight under 160. That's interesting. You know, I never even thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you've got to keep it down because mm-hmm. yeah. you, you, you just Otherwise become heavier for us to help. That's right. And I can't travel. So I, oh. I, I fast diet. I fast oh. diet. And I eat one meal a day. I did have some, you saw this, with the, the before, I had a little snack. I had yeah. some peanuts. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And I drink nothing but water. Nothing. Not hot cocoa, not orange juice, not cranberry juice. I drink water because it keeps my urinary tract uh, system cleansed. Yeah. No pop. I miss Dr. Pepper a lot. Not no. even cranberry juice? None. Interesting. And they say that's good for you. That's why I asked. Yeah. I, I, uh, I have found the best thing for me just to stay water. hydrated and keep the blood vessels popping out of my skin is yeah. water. So go. I drink eight bottles a day. And I have to count it because if I don't count it, I'm not going to drink it. Oh, yeah. It's not. It doesn't taste. You know, it doesn't have, <laughs> has no addictive taste to it. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Very good. No, that was funny. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap up our conversation okay. we've had so far, and I'm going to come back to you for a closing thought. Fair, fair. All, right. all right. So first of all, as listeners, one of the things that I want you to do is, first of all, check out the episode description. Chad has been so kind to actually put there in there in the episode description an offer. And it's essentially a number of different things such as books, videos, and so forth that he's compiled over the years that he's produced and created to actually help us as individuals better ourselves. And he's going to allow us to have access to those. So everyone listening, within the first 24 hours of this episode going live, he's going to put some special offers there for you to take advantage of. So I encourage you to check it out. If you're listening to this, after the 24 hours, still go to the episode description and see what those are, and perhaps there'll be some associated things that you can take advantage of as well. Second thing I want to do is obviously encourage you, if you've not already, to subscribe, perhaps set reminders for this episode or for this podcast so that you can get episode notifications and check out each and every week what we have new for you as you're working on your business. As a thank you, I also want to thank you for this wonderful discussion. I mean, as a summary of the conversation points, we started with essentially this idea of what we can be doing to get out of our own way and rely on other people. There's so many things that because of pride and ego, we prohibit others from helping us with, when in reality, we're denying them the opportunity to serve and therefore be blessed for the service that they're providing. And so if we could just be a little bit more open and perhaps needful of those around us, we can actually delegate more, have other people do things better than us. There's just so much that I think Chad was able to share at the very very beginning. Another thing that stood out to me is his emphasis on how dependent he is on others, and that just tied so well together. He spoke very highly of his friends and family. I, I really take a lot from that because I've seen Chad just in a situation, need the help of others. And he spoke of that of his sweet wife, Shondell. He spoke of his father. He spoke of his children. There's just so many people in his life. And I think we can each look at our surroundings and identify those people, past or present, that have really made a difference in our own lives. And I encourage you to, like he said, send an unsolicited text. Just let them know that you're thinking of them. And he specifically said, don't say you love them. Just be thankful for who they are and what they brought into your own life and send out that text message. And I'm going to do exactly that. The other thing that really stood out to me is the fact that we all face hard times. We all have setbacks. And Chad, being no different than any of us, in dealing with those has had to recognize what those opportunities mean. And he said, obviously, to focus and get back to just doing what is right and just moving forward and being grateful for what we have. And I think that's something we can all learn from. Great lessons there. I appreciated the fact that he came today. He's very selfless in providing his time. He travels immensely. We've been trying for months, months to coordinate with all of his travels to get this on the calendar. And he's very generous in his time because he's paid handsomely for the time that you spend elsewhere, and rightfully so, because I think you're a a gifted person and very generous with everything that he's done. And I hope that in listening to the the conversation today, you took away some tidbits and, and helpful information. For those of you who are listening to this podcast as to viewing it, 
check out the video. I think you'll also find a number of things very impactful if you watched it, if you didn't have a chance to do so. So, Chad, thank you for being here. Do you have a closing thought? Uh, just, uh, I would just say there's no such thing as false hope. Only false hopelessness. Because for everything that we do know and that we do believe in, there's so much more that we don't. Yeah. And tomorrow will be a better day. Good. Very well said. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. This has been a great opportunity to kind of sit back and work on who we are. And I hope you've got some mental things addressed. Obviously, if you would like to apply these principles and even more in your business and find out more how these apply to you, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us at universalaccountingschool.com or give us a phone call at 801-265-3777. And always remember this, if it's about accounting, it is universal. Take care and have a great day. Be safe out there.